mother sucks cocks in hell. Talk about my mama, son. You don't know my mama. I'm possessed by evil demons to torture me while I'm sleeping. I keep dreaming of death and I'm hearing people screaming. The devil's spirit is trapped inside me and I want it out. Like a I got a confession folks, I really like the Conjuring movies, and some of the spinoffs. I know these movies are looked down upon by many and described as just being mainstream Hollywood popcorn horror flicks, but some of these movies I really like, and if you got a problem with that, hey. I don't care. Also James Wan in particular is one of my favorite directors. His two Conjuring and Insidious movies are easily some of the best in the oversaturated paranormal horror genre. So I was excited when The Conjuring 3 was finally announced, but then I got nervous when I found out that James Wan was not going to be directing it. Instead he's taking a producer role and is credited for coming up with the story, and in his place is Michael Chaves, who is known for directing The Curse of La Llorona, which is easily one of the most boring horror movies I've seen in a long time, and it's definitely one of the weakest Conjuring Universe movies. But I remained optimistic, and hope that he improves since then because this is a mainline Conjuring movie, not one of the spinoffs, so it had to be good. This is the third film, it's now officially a trilogy, don't fumble it now. So the real question is, how did it turn out? Well it's alright, it's kind of a mixed bag. So the movie is based on the real life case of Arnie Johnson, who killed someone and claimed that he was possessed. It was the first time in America where someone pleaded not guilty by reason of demonic possession. So the Warrens come in and they start looking into it to see if he was really possessed. Now right off the bat, there's one big thing that I see people get disappointed about, and that is that the movie doesn't focus on the court case. It's not like the exorcism of Emily Rose. They're not all in a courtroom taking interviews and recapping the events. The trailer makes it look like the actual case is going to be a major focus, but it's not. There are only a few scenes where they actually are in a courtroom or talking to a lawyer. The bulk of this movie is actually just the Warrens uncovering information about witchcraft and satanic cults. So if you're looking for a courtroom-centric movie, then you'll be disappointed. Just want to get that out of the way because that's one reason I've been seeing people not like the movie. Now I can safely say that this movie is definitely better than The Curse of La Llorona and Michael Chase really did improve in between movies. There are some really impressive camera work and some really cool looking sequences. Like for example, Lorraine will be using her psychic powers and that's where you'll see some interesting stuff and visually it will look cool. Honestly there were things throughout the whole movie that made me go, oh that looks pretty cool. Also I like some of the nods to other horror movies. Like when the priest arrives in the beginning it looks similar to when the priest arrives in The Exorcist. And at the end when Ed is being manipulated to kill Lorraine, He's walking with a limp, he has a jacket on, and he's wielding a sledgehammer, and he reminds me of Jack from The Shining. And just like Jack, he's trying to kill his wife. As a horror fan, I really appreciate that stuff. And the soundtrack was pretty decent, but I'm actually more so happy they didn't use many of the stereotypical horror sound effects and cues, like the ones that were used in the trailer. And the cast is fine, even the kid wasn't that annoying, but of course the standouts are with the Warrens. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga are great in these roles, and their performances help elevate these movies, so I think the whole cast was just fine. So, it's a well-made movie, it's a pretty well-acted movie, and it's cool seeing the stuff they uncover as they investigate to see if the boy was really possessed. There are some really cool and creative sequences, but this movie is missing just one key thing. It's not very scary, and at times it feels more like a paranormal mystery thriller rather than a horror movie. It's not as slow or boring as The Curse of La Llorona, but the scares just aren't there. And when they do happen, they're honestly pretty underwhelming, and a few of them you'll see coming. Like there's a part where Arnie is looking through a hole in the wall. The camera zooms in, it gets really tense, and then nothing happens. But you know as soon as he turns around there's going to be something there, and that's exactly what what happens. Now you see what I really liked about James Wan is that he was able to not only create these cool sequences and set pieces, but he also has some really scary and unnerving ones. He's really good at subverting your expectations about what the scare was and where it was coming from. And that's really what this movie is missing. The plot is interesting enough to keep you intrigued, and there are some really cool moments to keep you entertained, but by the end you'll realize, huh, that wasn't very scary. And a few times this movie does try to subvert your expectations to where the scare was coming from, I don't think it hit the mark. So what you end up getting is more so just a paranormal mystery, with some very minimal and lackluster scares. Also, even though I was interested in the witchcraft and satanic cult, the movie doesn't give the satanist woman a clear goal. They talk about a curse and what is required to complete it and how to break it, but they don't really tell you what it does, so the whole time I'm just thinking, but why? because it's never really explained what the end goal is or what she wants. And even in the movie, someone asks what does the curse do and the movie just goes, Who knows why madmen do what they do? So it really should be no surprise at this point when I tell you, this is definitely the weakest of the three Conjuring movies. And honestly, it feels like a better made above average horror movie. Definitely better than the other films in the Conjuring universe, but not nearly as good as the two previous Conjuring movies. Which sucks because all the ingredients are there, and for what it is, I think the movie is pretty entertaining, but it's missing the unique scares. So I went ahead and asked you guys what you thought of the Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It. And honestly, I'm saying most people say the same thing. Not as good as the first two, parts of it are pretty cool, but it's not very scary, and overall it's just above average. And for people who don't like paranormal horror movies, this one definitely won't win them over. Especially if they saw the first two Conjure movies and they didn't like those, I don't think they'll like this one. So in the end, I'm a little disappointed, but I don't think the movie's terrible and parts of it is actually really good. Now this might be blasphemous, but I would be cool with seeing a fourth Conjuring film, but only if James Wan does it. Just as like one more last hoorah before ending the mainline Conjuring films. Because I would just much rather see 
see the main movies go out on a high note as opposed to this. But anyway, that's my thoughts on The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. Definitely not the strongest, but I don't think it's completely terrible. But I'll give the movie a... A 6 out of 10 or like a C. So why don't you go ahead, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like on it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. This is an exorcism of people.